Good morning, folks. I hope they've got a better handle on this than I give them credit for. Two satellites dead in the water is two catastrophes waiting to happen. Meteor smoke and noctilucent clouds. I invite you to see what height clouds form, and then tell me if water is capable of evaporating to heights of 75 kilometers or more, where the noctilucent clouds are. The answer is it can't. This is star water. And yes, they say meteorite dust makes up about 3% of those clouds. I'd expect it to be a lot more considering this water is racing through space. You will still notice they cannot explain why the clouds appear ionized and are seen at lower latitudes each day. They try to explain the other 97%, the water, by a methane reaction with sunlight in the tropopause, a mere 12 kilometers up, barely halfway to the ozone. Noctilucent clouds are more than five times higher than that. The worst part is that they know it's star water. They know about the collapsing atmosphere and the critical over-ionization I have demonstrated to you over the last few months. It's mornings like these that my on-off-again campaign against NASA feels like the right thing. A 4.4 quake hit Los Angeles this morning. Hurricane Ernesto has made landfall. This is snow in South Africa. This typhoon is still devastating eastern China, and they will update Torcon mid-afternoon. If you live here and don't check this, you are crazy. The glancing blow we were waiting for happened last night. The CME from film interruption numero uno struck around 2100 UTC. You can see the matching rise in speed and density of the solar wind, yellow and orange. Soho data registered a similar, much more discernible proton spike at the same time. The wake of this tiny impact caused brief geomagnetic disturbance in the ovation prime shows the impact and then waning particle bombardment. The BX component of the induction magnetometer shows induced resonance during the impact, just under 2 hertz and at the baseline resonance near zero. Many have seen these new BZ anomalies, and if we call the last one the 1400 anomaly, I suppose these are the stairways to heaven. Might as well have some fun with it. These are almost certainly man-made. The official's explanations that power lines cause this have set a little comedic mood from this chart from now on, and a little missing data here. You can see bright active regions turning the limb on the north and south. Both are magnetically complex and do pose a flare threat despite being boring and quiet for days. This filament became unstable for the third time and she's just about dead now. Most of the plasma either fell or got sucked back into the sun. That filament would occupy this area right here on the active region map. You can see the red spots or red blotches are negative polarity coronal holes. They should be easier to pick out now as you look at the AIA-193. These will affect Earth in the coming days. Now speaking of the coming days, Earth is off to the right here on Stereo B. The bright active regions on the right there are the two from the left side we showed you earlier looking from Earth. A few days behind that going to face us uh, in about a week or so is the South Pole coronal hole extended well up near a trans-equatorial position. Now you already know we got significant planetary conjunction set for August 14th. New moon is three days after that. Combine it with the potential for space weather that I just showed you and we haven't seen a six-pointer since August 2nd. That was the end of the last quake watch. You see where I'm going with this. You can also see meteorites for the next week or so in the night sky as Earth approaches a debris tail of Comet Swift-Tuttle. There's a lot to take in here folks. That's the news. Be safe.